<laughs> I like how you laughed in the middle of the beatbox. You're so funny. Because <laughs> you just see your lips because I saw your little tongue and it went. Well, welcome back to another episode oh. of Bellcast. And even though we started on a really light note, this one I kind of want to get serious. Oh shit, so it's going to be a really heavy note? Um, dun, dun, dun. Dun. It could be really heavy. Well, this thing, it's, uh, it's kind of dear to my heart because I grew up this way. And the big word is divorce. Oof. So Oof. I grew up. Ha ha, you have two houses. <laughs> so I grew up when my parents were divorced. I'm kidding. It's not funny. Gosh. So I grew up uh, where my parents were divorced and they divorced when I was young, when I was six. I'm sorry. And um, so I think for me, it's been a commitment of mine that if I were a to promise. get married... I never want to get divorced because I know how traumatic it is for kids because I went through it. I'm so sorry. So for me, I'm like, I don't care what happens between you and I. I will do but when my we're fighting, best. When we're fighting, you're always like, so what, you want to get divorced? And I'm like. <laughs> if you do that, the fight will stop. Oh, damn it. <laughs> so, yeah, I never want to uh, get divorced and I'll do whatever I can to. Uh, prevent that i'm not gonna say i'll never get divorced no you're not if we're with me you're not fucking getting divorced are you kidding me then we're never gonna get divorced yeah we're never gonna get divorced um yeah so like for me that's like uh that's not even an option that's a a vow that's a promise um so i guess the thing that i kind of want to talk about today is back in those days what are those days like your mom's generation so in the 60s oh wait maybe whatever whatever it is but it's just 70s previously Divorce wasn't an option. Currently, divorce is a huge option. By option, you mean socially acceptable? Because it was an option back then. A reasonable op- option. Like for your mom, it wasn't a reasonable option because she'll get shunned from her group, shunned from her uh, from her house. Yes, yes, so social, from socially. A, whatever. Okay. Just reasonable option. Like obviously, she can go and get a lawyer and yeah. do the black and white things. Yeah. But I'm just talking Wait. about financial consequences, social consequences, emotional consequences. Yeah. Like reasonably, you couldn't really get divorced back then. Yeah. Your mom and my mom are the same generation. Yeah. Okay. But she's not Catholic. So that's one huge thing taken off where like your mom had way less of an option than my mom did. Yeah, she did. And she came from a small town. And my, That's already my mom's second divorce. Okay. I hope your mom doesn't mind you. Nah, she don't care. But you know, you know what Look, I mean? she don't speak so, English. So, so that's what I'm just saying. It's just uh, different people during different times. Yeah. Some people don't have an option now. Right, right. Um, and some people have more of an option before. Yeah. But I guess what I'm trying to, I guess, discover and talk about with you isn't so much the time period. Okay. But the... That mindset? But like, yeah, the mindset and like what could be good and bad about both. Uh, Both what? Divorce both? and not divorce being an option. Okay. I, I don't know. You would have to carry the divorce. I wasn't really around. Even, even my friends, I wasn't around people that were divorced. So I guess the most common argument is this, right? Uh, people that are for not divorce. Yeah. Um, they're usually like, uh, you, you, you keep the team together. Yeah. Um, quitting is not an option. Mm-hmm. We are going to stay a unit. It might be hard, but we're going to do whatever it can. Yeah. And then we're always going to fight out of it. Yeah. Right. That's right. That's that argument. Mm-hmm. The argument for divorce or even a mild form of that breaking up is, um, well, I'm so unhappy here. Mm-hmm. I'm so I'm going to be depressed, maybe even going to be suicidal. Um, we've we've grown apart. We've grown differently. And um, I'm, 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 I'm living in hell. And I think if we were able to break this bond, we can seek happiness and live happier lives afterwards. Yeah. Well, no, they both sound like they're, they can be similar. I think. uh, Fundamentally, they're different. Because one is a collective mindset. The other one one is an individualistic mindset. Not necessarily, not necessarily. Because it can also be collective where they're like, us being together is causing so much turbulence in our entire household. The kids are being affected. Our families are being affected. You know what I mean? So that's still that's still thinking collectively. It's like if we're together, it's way more devastating than us splitting up. 
So that's still a collective. So you're saying divorce could be collective? It can. It could be way better for the situation if the dad's an alcoholic or the mom's an al- a, a alcoholic drug abuser. But the if the person's like, no, we can get through this, like the kids are suffering through all of that too. Yeah. You know I, I, mean? I wasn't even considering a shitting parent. I'm just considering normal circumstances. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm like not not any huge handicap. But yeah. I'm just thinking of like everyone. Or is- just people that just are kind of immature. I mean, that's very common. Yeah. They don't know how to problem solve. They don't know how to work together as a team. Or they just they just communicate so differently that they just grew to completely different people. Yeah. You know, so they're not necessarily uh, as extreme as I painted it. But then that could be something that they're better as friends. Because look at like, uh, we have a mutual friend, more of like an acquaintance who he had a daughter when he was really, really young. Um, and then he became, he just realized like, the person I made my daughter with, the mother, um, we're just not meant to be in this relationship, but we're best friends. Like we're really good friends. So they'll hang out, but they still, so the daughter gets to grow up. But I mean, unfortunately she's in two separate houses, but there's so much love between them two as friends and then towards her. So there's that too. So you're the, you're for a divorce option. I'm not, I'm not for anything. I'm just for what's going to be the best for the whole group. Hmm. You know so I mean? do you think divorce is a uh, almost a group decision then? Um yeah, kind of. Kind of. Um I think I care more about if there's kids involved. So if there's more kids involved, I really want that decision to consider how it affects and it all that trickles down to them mainly. Because I've also seen families where they waited for both of their kids or all three kids to turn eighteen. Yeah. And then they break it to them so that they can have that unbroken home. Yeah. And uh, later on, they're like, "Hey, you know, like mom and I, we just never really got along. We kind of fell out of love, but we stayed a family for the sake of the kids." Yeah. So I've seen that too. What made that maybe that's kind of like in between divorce and staying together and having a collective or individual mindset? Yeah, I still feel like it's still confusing for kids. I mean, but we're older, right? I mean, the kids are older, so you can like you have a little bit more emotional tolerance. Yeah, and and you're just just more intelligent and wiser, so you can really empathize and and see both sides. It depends on. I mean, it depends on the kid too. Like when I was six, and they were gonna get divorced, and my parents broke it to me. I remember being six and going, "Duh." Cause I remember them fighting all the time. They're fighting, they're yelling, and then they would always get out of the house or I'm gonna leave or whatever, like those type of words. I've seen my dad storm out so many times. And uh, when they said like, hey, you know, um, dad and I aren't gonna be together for very long, I'm like, good. That's what I thought. But mm-hmm. that, that's me being a freaking tiny six-year-old that didn't know anything, you yeah. know? And then I think at that time, since I was the minority, I almost thought I was cool. Cause like, oh, because all your friends, they were still together. Everyone's parents were together. So I'm like, oh, my parents are divorced. It was like a cool word I got to toss around. Yeah. yeah my parents are divorced. What about yours? Are yeah. you together? <laughs> I remember like hearing else. that like when I was younger. But that, I was stupid as hell too. That they had two houses and I'm like, and then they would get two separate gifts and stuff. I'm like, that's so cool. But I didn't understand really what that meant. No, it, it, yeah, it's, it's horrible because you don't have a home. Yeah, I think I'm not really pro or against anything per se. I think um, I... I'm for the decision that's going to be the best for everyone. Yeah. But that decision is depending on which, let me, let me use some photography terms, depending on how long your shutter is, it, that also depends on your decision. So if you're taking a millisecond snapshot, you're only going to have this much context. But like, so for my grandparents, right, um, from what I understand, when I got to know them, they're all, are already older. Like I knew them from their 60s till their, when they're 80. They are the most loving, most romantic notebook type of senior citizens I've ever met. They seem so in love, so caring. It wasn't until later when I got older that I found out that they had a really rocky like 20, 30 year period when my uh, grandpa, he worked on a boat. So he would leave the family quite a bit. They didn't, they, they didn't really like, see each other. For like weeks? Months. months. Oh, shit. And then, um, cause, uh, yeah, because they would leave on the boat. And then uh, my grandma would be taking care of the three kids. Um, they've had like affairs here and there. It was just crazy. Like Both tw- of them? I don't know. I don't, oh. I, mean, I don't really know the full story because now it's like two or three gen- uh, degrees apart. So it's like two, degree, two to three degrees of telephone. But they've 
it's really rocky, you know? So if you're taking a, a picture within that time period, for sure you got to break up. But when you're taking like a very nicely exposed picture where it's going to take a whole five seconds to to get the whole picture, you're like, oh shit, maybe it was worth toughing it out for 20 years to achieve what they the level of happiness they're able to achieve. Because I've never seen love the way my grandparents have loved. And I'm like, maybe it takes that to get that. Maybe mm. it takes that much turmoil to get that. Mm. And um, a lot of people, they say when you grow up in a broken home, that's what your model is, right? right? So right. anytime your relationship gets turbulent, you're like, peace, 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 because peace, that's what you're used to. Just like how if your parents are alcoholic, more than likely you're going to be have some, some substance abuse. Yeah. But I think because I was around my grandparents for so long. That was your model. That was my model. And I know that it's possible because yeah. I've seen it happen. Yeah. So I think for me, there's like, I'm like, how, I guess, how much pain and suffering do you, is worth, worth it for the bigger overall picture? Oof, that's a, that's a heavy, heavy question. Oof. Like your parents have been together, right? Yeah, I was, I was about to talk about that. So, um, my father passed away 2016, but yeah, they've been married and they've been together my whole life yeah. and my sister's uh wait how old am i so she's 41 and they they've been together for 51. like 51 oh shit wait yeah 15 years older right yeah 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 she's 51, 51 or she's about to be 51 yeah so yeah my sister's 50 so they've been together for at least 50 years holy crap yeah well, that just struck me. Um, That's a long yeah, time. Yeah, and I remember, I remember seeing my mom really unhappy. I never saw them fight. Like, yeah, they would like. You could tell they got upset at each other, but it, I've never seen them yell at each other. Like you, you know, my dad was mad at my mom or vice versa, but it was never like, "What the fuck?" And this, and I've never heard them ever cuss at each other. They never raised a voice, never raised hands at each other. Like, um, very respectful. To they each were, other. yeah, they were very respectful to each other. However. And they were slightly, I mean, they were affectionate. Like I now looking back at it, I'm like, whoa, they were kind of horn dogs with each other. Cause like he'd grab her butt and yeah. they would make comments and she'd have giggles and stuff. But now looking back, I'm like, oh, y'all were making some sexual ass jokes. Y'all nasties. Yeah. But I didn't get it then. Mom's a freak. She can't help it. But I just remember seeing my mom so unhappy. She would always complain about his absence and he's always working. Or if he's not working, he's with his friends and like, why doesn't he do this? Why doesn't he help out with this? Like, she's venting. Yeah. Now I realize that's what it was. But at that time, I, I, you know, when you're introduced to someone, uh, you've never met that person, but the person that knows them, they're like, oh, that person sucks at this. They fucking do this, blah, blah, blah. And they get, they paint them in the worst picture ever. Yes. Yeah, so when you meet them, they're already like you already a hate negative them. five or something. Yeah. You're yeah. already like weary of, of being their friend. Yeah. Um, that's how I was with my dad because of how my mom presented him to me because he wasn't yeah. around so much because yeah. he just worked and, and he just wasn't home Yeah. or he would leave really early in the morning. Um, that my, my idea of my dad was this guy that was like not empathetic, not supportive, not a good husband. So I just didn't like him because of her. So I remember feeling like, fuck man, just get divorced already. Like mom's not happy. I don't know where the fuck dad is. Like, I don't know what, where he is. What like, he's he up to. He doesn't like give me any sort of guidance. So yeah, I don't care if he goes. I remember going like, Jesus, just fucking break up already. But. How old are you when you thought of this? In high school. Oh, so you're pretty old. Yeah, I was older. Like 15. Yeah, that's pretty old. Yeah. Um, And I just was like, God, just fucking do it already. That's so fucking annoying. But now at 36, I'm so happy that they never did. That they stuck it out, right? Yeah. You know, but but then I, I'm like, I don't know if if it if it was good, like I don't know because like would would I have liked to have seen my mom be happier? Would I have seen my dad more if they split up? Like, you never know. Yeah, it's like when I because I met you, um, like later on in life, obviously, so that I met your parents when they were happy, and they would go on these road trips, go visit missions, and I'm like, yeah. oh look how loving they are. Yeah, it was and, cute. And you never, but you never know all the turmoil they had to go through. Right. And then so when I think about relationships and divorce and calling it quits and stuff like that, it always I, it always um, it makes me circle back to the the same thing with kids. You know how they're like, like uh, you always want to teach the kids like you got to push them because all kids want to quit. Right. So you constantly have to push them and make them go through the shit 
and then only for them to find out like three years later, oh, thanks, mom. I, I got my black belt because of you. Yeah. But it's like how much pain and turmoil is worth pushing them through for the victory at the end. Yeah, that's hard. That's really good. Um, let me pause you right there real quick because I want to introduce our first sponsor. Okay, so our first sponsor is ShipStation. And now I'm talking to all my entrepreneurs out there or anyone selling anything online. Listen up, okay? Because this is for you guys. Um, so... ShipStation is an online selling um, tool that helps you organize uh, the inventory, shipping, uh, labeling, all of that stuff. If you're selling on eBay or Etsy or if you have your own website or on Amazon, like normally you would have to have different um, different programs to support your shipping, like for you to ship it out. But what ShipStation does, it organizes everything for you into one interface yep. and you can see it all at once. You can handle it it right then and there whereas before when we were shipping we were using uh usps and that was super archaic it was so archaic and to get one order out it literally took us like 20 minutes and don't even mention it uh if it was like an international order because then you needed custom forms and it was just such a freaking headache that I wish we had ShipStation back in the day because it just makes life so much easier. Yeah because it's fulfillment um, tracking, customer service, all in one, and it's all in one app. And you can control that entire back end of your business off your cell phone, in your pocket, with you, 24 hours a day. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, and sip and Ship Station works with all major carriers, including USPS, who I just knocked right now. Yeah. <laughs> but don't so use if you them. you still like them, <laughs> no, no, you can work with use them. Use them to ship your stuff, but stick with Ship Station. Trust yeah. me. Take my personal word on that. Uh, they work with FedEx, UPS, and Amazon Fulfillment. So they already work with people that you were already shipping with. Um, so right now, for all you guys listening, ShipStation is going to give you guys free 60 days when you use code BEAW, B-E-A-W. There's no risk. You can start your free trial without even entering a credit card. Wow. So just go to ShipStation.com. Um, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in BEAW. B E A W. That's shipstation.com. Then enter code bail. B E A W. That's shipstation.com. I love their motto make ship happen. I like that. And we're back. No, that's a great question. I have no, I, I'm, I'm lost because for me, I don't think there's a blanket statement or like a blanket rule yeah. for that. Yeah. I think each person has to figure out. Um, who they are first. Yeah, and I'm just talking about like one sliver it's of tiny, families where right. hopefully there's no abuse, no nothing, no right. financial stress. Because if there's a lot of like- That's huge. That it, can break someone up. Yeah, because even, even two people that are madly in love that are willing to work it out. But if one person is extremely financially responsible, the other one, credit is insane, is dragging the whole family down. Yeah, that's not fair. That might even be a good good reason for divorce. Because yeah. one's an actual whole, and it doesn't matter how much you love them, if like you love collectively, but financially you're a drain, yeah. that might not even be a good partner either. So I'm just looking at one sliver of the pie. Because then even like the concept of love is like also very unique. You know what I mean? Because like when I was uh, growing up, I didn't believe in love. I didn't think there was. I mean, I believed in love because I felt the love for my parents. But I didn't, I didn't believe that there was this thing as like a soulmate. And then you fall in love with someone. I just thought like it was kind of like um, not a business transaction. That's not the right way to put it. But it just felt like you find someone that you're compatible with. You look at their stats, you know, and you're like, okay, you're you're hardworking, you're dedicated, you're loyal, um, you have good head on your shoulders, you're morally good, whatever. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. You make a good partner. Yeah, you're doing. And, you're you're pretty much your own dating app, and you have your own algorithm in your head. Yeah, and then and then you grow to love them more. Um, from that point. Yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I think love is too. But I didn't think that with you. That's cute. <laughs> I'm not trying to flirt, I promise. But I didn't <laughs> I didn't bad. feel that with you. I didn't feel like, okay, on paper your your stats are good. Okay, you we're compatible. And then I'll learn to my love for you will grow more and more. It was like What'd you feel with me? <laughs> someone where's your fishing rod at? <laughs> No, it felt like I, I like I already knew you and you were this missing, not a missing puzzle because it's not like I wasn't complete, but it just felt like like 
I already knew you and you already needed to be in my life. Like, where were you this whole time? Like, you were already in my life before. Why'd you leave? Like, it felt like you were already here and and you took off for a little bit and you just needed to come right back. That's, That's what it felt like. Like, That's I just cute. felt like you were so familiar and like, I I loved you so much or I still love you so much um, Good. that like, I was like, holy shit, true love ex exists. Yeah. And soulmates exist. But then I also think about people like uh that get into arranged marriages and they make it work and they love it not all of them not all of them but i have heard instances from like close sources of mine that were like this is the best like i can't wait because they they were into tr tradition and they were just like yeah i love this it works my grandparents were know, arranged yeah we both know what we're getting into it's kind of like a business transaction my grandparents were arranged they were uh they they kind of knew like the same class so they had to get married in the same class and then it was kind of like uh like i think my grandpa like oh who's that girl and then is she one of the ones that's a possible candidate and then the mom would be like yeah she's a possible candidate oh can we like announce our interest so the mom would go over to my grandma's house and talk to their parents hey uh she is of interest to my son um but is she do you value our family the way our family could value you very transactional like that and then they arrange for it and then i think the first date they had two chaperones oof yeah, it was, a, it was an arranged marriage. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. And then they worked out all the way. Yeah, I've had... I've, uh, That's hard. I've had friends at UCLA that are my roommates. She was Indian. And for her, she oh, was... Right. And she was like, there's no point in uh, even dating because I know I'm going to be arranged marriage. And then the way that she viewed it, it didn't feel like lockdown. It wasn't like, man, I wish I could date around or anything for her. She was like, yeah, uh, my parents, they love me. So they're going to introduce me to someone that's a dope candidate. And um, I can't wait. And I hopefully it works out. And so they they found her someone dope. I haven't stalked on Facebook in like over 10 years, but I'm assuming they're probably still together. And because she already knew what her destiny was going to be, a lot of the the dating didn't really matter to her. She just saw it as unnecessary heart heartache. Yeah. Which in some cases I'm like, maybe there's some merit to that, you know? Maybe there is some merit to not having options. Like when you have so many options. Yeah, it gets, it's overwhelming. It's like, you know, some people like when we go eat in and out, it's easy. There's only yeah. like two things. That's all you get. And then when you're at in and out, you just, you know, but then I guess the, the counter argument is, well, can you have in and out every day? That's why you need to have options. So you can, I don't know, not be insane or something. Yeah, man, this is, this one's a tough one for me because I'm all about, choices i really am and i'm all about being happy um and i know that's more singular i know that's more selfish but i and i do respect people that are about like you know the collective mindset um yeah i it, it this one's a hard one for me yeah because i feel like um so I, I guess for me personally i'm not uh i'm not like a, a i like if I find something that I can really connect with or someone that I can really connect with, it's hard for me to let that go because I think I felt, I felt so deeply for it. So I think I can, um, I don't know. I think I could put up with a lot and, um, and, and still kind of keep fighting for it. Yeah. So for me, I think my own personal take on it is I don't think divorce as an option is actually a good idea. That's my, that's my, um, that's, that's what and I And this think. is for you saying it from just a, a relationship that's normal. That yeah. Not, not normal. No one's but. getting their ass beat by the other person. No one is like in crazy financial debt that they don't, no one's a drug addict. I'm just talking about just like two consenting adults that seemingly have like decent, uh, their shit together. And for me, I think like when you have an option, you, because of who we are as human beings, I think when you have options and the going gets tough, a lot of humans entertain that option. And I think when you entertain that option, it's a bad idea. Because then you're like, what if there's someone else out there? You know, versus if you guys are stuck in a foxhole and you're fighting this war, you guys have to watch each other's back because the bad guys are gonna come and blast your ass. When you have no options, you don't go, man, I wish I was in here with Corporal Garcia 
you me and him, we get to talk about Game of Thrones way more. It's like, no, you don't have options. Whoever this dickhead is, he's watching their back, you're watching their back, and that's it. You got to stay here. And then you will internally kind of like Karate Kid, you will find a way to love each other and find a way to work things out. That's what I think. I actually feel like um, people don't have enough commitment these days and they uh, it's so easy to kind of just start all over, hit the reset button. It's like an instant gratification. You know, it's like when you play video games, like I've seen people like back in the day before you can save the game. You'll see people fight till the end until they actually die in the game. Now they play one second. Oh, that's not that's not even my best. I'll start over. Oh, that's not my best. They make one little mistake instead of continuing on. They just start over, over and over and over and over again. Yeah. But that's that's for me once you get married. I think before you get married, I actually feel like people should try a lot. Yeah. Experiment a lot. Do all of that. Date as much as you want. And then maybe even in the engagement period prolong that so many people are engaged for a few months i'm like that's almost your tester marriage period maybe like maybe your engagement period is when you should move in really meet the family have two years of or three or four or five of probationary marriage and see how it's like but i think once you guys say till death do us part i think it's i in my opinion i'm i'm for sure i'm not examining all those examples and circumstances I think from that, I think it's unhealthy to have an option. Yeah. That's what I think. And I could be wrong, but that's 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 what my experience is and what my gut feeling and my understanding of human nature has told me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, I mean, because now it makes me think of like the whole concept of marriage, right? Yeah. Because then it's like, You've even said this, like, biologically, we're not monogamous creatures. No, we're not. So then even the concept of marriage already seems like it's something that goes even further away from our our human nature. You yeah, know? yeah. So that's like so many things already working against us that it's like, why even put so much emphasis on the marriage? But you go like 200... You go like, not 200 episodes, but like 10 episodes back where we talked about having an open relationship. That's still sticking it through. You know, like that's like monogamy and sticking it through with your team. That's like me and Joe, we're going to be business partners and forever. Right. But that doesn't mean I can't have another business with someone else. But my loyalty to Joe is extremely strong. Just like my loyalty to you is extremely strong. So the monogamy and the monogamy in that part is not. It's Connect. not, oh, it's, not it's not connected, you that know. Way, I'm, yeah. I'm just talking about like, um, because a lot of people they also look up to us and go, oh, relationship goals, relationship goals. And one of the comments that I re- like, one of the more deeper, because relationship goal, I think that's just more of like a hashtag, like oh, hashtag body goals. You know, it's like it's like a more surface level thing. One of the more recurring deep ones that I've seen is, hey, I'm so grateful that you and Gio are together because you guys, uh show that relationships can push through and are good role models. Mm. So that made me go, oh, shoot. That's like me seeing my grandparents. Because I saw two people make it through all the way, Mm -hmm. people see us as how I see my grandparents. Mm. And then like, yeah, we have a lot of ups and downs, but we fight through it. And, you know, and if we always fight through it, that's what Taika is going to see. Two people, if they want to make it work, they can make it work. Yeah. And then it creates, uh, when you create order in the family, you create order in the city and then you create order in the whole country. Yeah. And I think that's like something that like the conservatives, that's something that uh, I think they harp on, which they're like, one of the reasons why we have so much unrest in the country is because we have too many um extra shades that you could choose from now whereas back then it's like let's do this and then when we're like this then we're all like you know we're all nice and structured and when there's structure we can thrive just like a business you know like when yeah. the more structure a business has the more it thrives when it's all loosey-goosey that's when shit gets falls apart so i think there's that structure that i, I like about it but i'm also new school yeah because i'm also younger so like there's the monogamy issue where i'm like maybe, maybe people can have open relationships but you got to come back or I'm not against people having sex before marriage. Do all that. But then I think when when you say marriage, which is a till death do us part, you're supposed to spend the rest of your lives together. When you let those words come out of your mouth, 
I don't think you should be able to go back to it, you know? Uh, go back on those words. Yeah. Or else don't say those words. That's just, that, again, that's like my main point. Because when you put that out there and the world knows that and your kids know that, now you're telling your kids it's okay to go back. Yeah. And I'm still stressing and emphasizing normal people. Not you get married and all right. of a sudden your partner's beating the fuck out of you. And then you're like, oh, wait, this is not the person I'm married. That's different. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's its own thing. But yeah. 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 I mean, I, I see where you're coming from. And um, I'm, I'm similar to that where, I, and I like that structure that where you're just like, you're together. And when, when you guys are boyfriend, girlfriend, I think it should be open and you should explore and, and have all these options. And then when you, when you get engaged, the move in period, I think that's really cool. Cause yeah. you get to see a completely different side of someone when you start cohabitating, yeah. like that's when it really gets real and you're and really get, tested. And get really involved with the in-laws, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, cause you're not just marrying them, you're marrying their family. Yeah. Now get really involved in the in-laws and see if the the marriage of families works for you too. Yeah, cause what's also hard for me uh, to say yes to, um, yes or no to divorces, I think this is why I'm so stuck, is that people don't know who they are. They don't know what it is that they don't understand what it is that that sets off their triggers. They don't know what it is that makes them happy. Uh, they don't know why they're sad. You know what I mean? And when I say they, I'm including myself in that. Yeah, you people know? don't know who they really are yet. Yeah. Later. yeah. Like, like, what's their main driver? Like, is it yeah. is it selfish? And it's OK to be selfish. You know what I mean? But you just have to know that that's the state of mind that you're in. You know that it that it's it's a you show right now. And. And, and you're dealing with whatever baggage you're dealing with, but sorting all that shit out and ha and really understanding that, I feel like once you have a better understanding and a grasp of who you are and what your drivers and triggers and all that stuff are, um, then I feel like at that point, then you're ready to get married or you're ready to get a divorce. You know what I mean? I feel like right now, a lot of people, yeah, commitment thing could be an issue, you know? And, and right now we are we do live in a world where we get instant gratification oh we like that song hey siri who sings that oh that person okay i'm buying it right now oh shit i want to watch this show i'm watching it right now like we get instant gratification oh shit because i said hey siri <laughs> oh damn yeah, she's works. good that thing works really good yeah she's really good um <laughs> that was funny you see how instant that was though i just yeah. said her name she pops up so so without really testing that and without seeing yourself in that light um I think making a like the decision to get divorced is just selling yourself short because you never really got to see that full potential. So that's why it's yeah. it's hard for me to say, yes, do it. No, don't do it. Yeah. Because and I guess the hardest part is figuring out like figuring out who you are yeah. and knowing when you think you know who you are, you know, because when you're 25, you ask someone at 20 or you ask them when they're 20. Do you know who you are? Go, oh, of yeah. Course. Then when they're 25, you go, did you know who you, who you are? No. Nope. Hell no. <laughs> and then you ask them when they're 30, did you know who you were when you're 25? Yes. Oh, no, when they look back? Like oh, yeah, every no. Every five years, yeah, it's you like, don't know. You that guy was an idiot. That guy was an idiot. Yeah. That guy was an idiot. Yeah. It's slowing down for me now because I'm older. Yeah. So I'm what? 35. 35 this year. When I look at when I'm 30, I think I'm pretty sure I, I'm, I'm like... I didn't you're change very much. I didn't change very much, you know. You changed a lot. I changed a lot from twenty five to thirty, but from thirty to thirty five, I don't think I changed that much. You changed a lot. I did. Yeah. Oh shit. Uh, that's, 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 I don't know who I am either. I think you're a completely different person than you were three years ago. Oh wow. Completely wow. different. Wow. Um, but on that note, let me get back to this. But uh, first, I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> <laughs> Shout outs to our other sponsor, Best Fiends. If you're looking for a fun way. To pass the time, or if you want to play a fun game with good story and cool graphics, check out Best Fiends. So I just started playing it last time because I saw Geo play it all the time. And you could actually level up pretty quick. And you start getting better and better. And you start wanting to anticipate and, and push yourself. So now I'm at level 28. So if you're traveling or if you're uh, on a bus or you, you want to have a fun, stimulating game to pass the time, this is super, super fun. And it's a free download. So you can go to the Apple App Store or Google Play and look for Best Fiends. That's Fiends, F-I-E-N-D-S. Think of friends, like best friends, but without the R. Best Fiends, you can get a free download and have a really fun time. And we're back from that. So now we can talk about this. You like what I did there? I like that, yeah. <laughs> um, 
Okay, I keep bringing this up, but I, the reason why I'm bringing it up because it was so life changing, you guys. And I don't mean to like harp on it, but this Tony Robbins yeah. um, seminar that I went to is called Date with Destiny. It was completely eye opening and um, so life changing. So one of the things that he he really wants you to figure out who you are and what your goal is in life. Right. And everyone's goal, no matter how old you are, what your profession is, how much money you have, all of that. People just want a happy life, no matter what. You can have the fucking richest person in the world and he's not happy. All of that doesn't mean shit. True. And he wants to be, or she wants to, they want to be happy. True, They yeah. want to be happy. They want to feel love. Yeah. So we all have the same exact desire. Yeah. They might be measured a little bit differently or whatever, but ultimately that's pretty damn similar. Yeah. So when I was at the seminar, he was asking us questions uh, of like what type of person or what state we are currently in. And some of us are, are in a, in a, a lower, I don't want to, I don't want to scale it that way, but, uh, we're, we're more about ourselves like, oh, you hurt me, or I'm going to do this for me. Or like in the, in a, in a, in a divorce situation well, I'm leaving because I'm not happy. So it's all about me, 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 me. And that's not wrong, but it's not right. And then there's a, the next phase where it's like, um, okay, well now it's, I'm gonna do things for my tribe and my friends and make sure um, my close circle of people, like we all decide on this together. And so it's a little bit more like- Collective. It's, it's kind of collective, but not really because you're not, you're not, you don't have independent thought. Yeah. It's more like you're leaning back on people to kind of make decisions for you in a way. Yeah, I see. I could be botching this up a little bit, but it's i'm trying to make that's, it as that's basic. the general idea yeah and then from that phase is the different tier of that is now um uh kind of where you want to do things on a larger scale like own a business or, or an org um and and you're doing it now to get profit or like like it's more of a transaction type of thing so there's different levels that we are in uh spiritually mentally and depending on that level your your decision making is different so people that are more in the me 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 phase are probably going to be quicker to get a divorce than someone that's on a more um uh like utilitarian i guess space where they're like well wait a minute let's consider all everything and see how it's going to affect and what the chain reaction of this stuff is and let me think about it you know five ten years down the line like let's really you know because it's not about me 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 anymore it's about like the whole yeah you know and to get and people it doesn't matter the age it just matters the life experiences and just how how much work you've done on yourself yeah so that's why i guess i keep harping on the idea of like you really have to know who you are and where you're at in your life and mentally and emotionally, yeah, you know, like a lot of us get into relationships because we need some sort of validation, yeah. you know, or there's yeah. this void in our life that like we feel like we're incomplete until we have a partner. Yeah. And I feel like those are the times that uh, when decisions put on the, uh, the decision for divorce is put on the table is when you're not really going to make the best decision because you already went in, in into it kind of on a negative. Yeah. You know, so like. That's just kind of what's unfortunate right now that we're not being educated on is how to like, like breed ourselves better. Yeah. And love ourselves. I think that was one of the reasons why I kind of refrained from dating for a while. I didn't want to date until I was proud of myself. That's awesome. So I think that's why I didn't really date much because I'm like, um, I don't want to enter into a, a relationship where I felt like I already needed help. You know what I mean? Cause I, 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 I didn't, I want to be in a relationship where I'm like, okay, I'm proud of myself. I did my, I, I graduated college. I did this. I did like this. I have a list of accolades and my own personal accolades that I make me feel who I am. And I've accomplished what I want to accomplish. So when I meet someone and we start our relationship, it's like two strong people. Yeah. Not like one person that's half drowning. And then the other person is also kind of half drowning. Yeah. And then we're just two drowning people making out in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> oh, that's kind of hot. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I But then because of that, I have way less relationship experience than you do. Yeah. You know, so I don't, there's, there's definitely like good and bad to both. Yeah. And I mean, I guess relationship experience is all subjective too. Cause you might've had maybe one or two, but they're really fucking deep and like strong relationships where I could have had 20 very immature relationships. That's I don't true. think that matters. That's true. Um, But there was a time, and this was before you, where I, 
like I knew what I brought to the table. Yeah. But because I was so deprived of of love and I think I wanted my dad's attention so much that I felt like I needed this male count, count, counterpart yeah. to complete me because I felt like I wasn't a complete person just yet. Mm. You know, and then just now even thinking of that, that I was thinking like that back then, I'm like, wow, that's fucking crazy. Like, of, of course I'm a whole person. Yeah. I'm one person. Yeah. I'm not like missing half of something yeah, and yeah. need someone else. To, like, that's yeah. such an interesting thought, but I yeah. really genuinely felt like I needed my male counterpart to complete me and make me feel whole. And like, no wonder that didn't last, you know? Cause then if I'm holding myself up to this level and and this is the the void I have and this guy needs to fill this void and I'm, and I'm doing it also because I feel of lack of like male love or something, then this dude was destined to fail. Yeah. Cause I'm like, you're not up to my standard and I'm like judging him. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's fucked up. Cause I'm only looking for what I want. Yeah. I'm not looking for what the partnership needs. Yeah. It's, well, what do I want? Are you giving that to me? No, okay, next. Yeah, yeah. You know? So like, yeah, like it's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard for me to say yes, divorce, no divorce. Cause I feel like yeah. as people, that's why I'm such a huge advocate for therapy. Yeah. Like, like go get it, go do any type of therapy, whether that's just even writing in a journal, you know, like I've never really seen, um, I've never been with a therapist. But the crazy part is when I've talked to my friends that have been to therapy and we're talking about their issues or whatever, the questions I'm asking them, they're like, oh shit, my therapist asked me the same thing. Oh, that's that's the right way to question. And I'm like, oh shit, cool. Maybe you should be a therapist. No, no way. Maybe I'm <laughs> maybe because I'm crazy, yeah. but like I have my own versions of that, of therapy and stuff, whether that's talking to friends or you or or writing things down in a journal or looking things up online or the podcast or like doing that seminar thing, like like anything that's gonna help me question myself and ask the correct questions and and just try to be as honest as possible and like really taking ownership to anything good or bad that it re that surfaces yeah. or resurfaces. Um, I'm huge, I'm huge for that. I'm huge for that. So I guess if I was like, if you put a gun to my head and you're like, you have to fucking choose, are you for divorce or not for divorce? I would say not for divorce. Mm. Yeah, Just I would try say- try to stick it through if you can. Yeah, I would try to stick it through because I think um, before you make such a drastic decision that's gonna affect so many facets of your life, it's really trying to understand who you are and what problems you're bringing to the table. Like yeah. what good you bring to the table and what bad you're bringing to the table. You know, cause, cause we're all energy, yeah, you yeah. know, we're positive and negative energy and we possess both. And we're bringing as much positive as we bring, we might bring more negative or vice versa, you know, like yeah. we might bring less positive and we're bringing a lot of fucking negative, but I think we really need to see that. Cause it's, it's, it's really fucked up to be like, you're not giving me what I want. I'm not getting what I want out of this. It's like, well, wait, it's, it's two people. We were complete strangers before. We grew up completely different. Yeah. Like, of course, we're not going to see a lot of things eye to eye. Yeah. But that's the beauty of a relationship. If it was that easy, then, you know what I mean? Then why would you need a relationship for? I think it's, it's like, it's that polarity. Yeah. I think um, for me, I'm for sure, like, I'm for anybody for freedom of choice, of course, right? Yeah, like yeah, any, yeah. You do of whatever you, you want to do. Yeah. But I do think uh, for me personally, my choice would be to stick it through. And I think that not having options is the best because most of my best life lessons came from not having options. And it taught me the um, importance of sticking through things. But like you said, I think, but also people don't know who they are yet. And what if they make a commitment, like a stupid ass commitment when they're not who they are yet, right? Like they buy a time show when they're 18 or they get themselves into some stupid loan when they're 17. Yeah. So to me, I also believe in a lot of experimentation to figure out who you and are failure. and failure. But when marriage has the terms and have the meaning, I don't like going back on things because then it lessens the meaning of those words like if yeah. you say until i die i'm gonna be with you but you're able to leave it then don't even say that you know i feel like words need to hold on to their meaning or else don't don't say it yeah so for me i think like because of that and because i've seen 
the enormous benefits of people sticking together. Yeah. Um, That's beautiful. Imagine that. Like, imagine being in the worst fucking position and you fucking can't stand this person. You can't be intimate with them anymore. They don't understand you. You don't understand them. You feel like you're strangers. Um, and then being able to get over that hurdle, how rewarding it'll be when you actually cross the finish line and now feel the complete opposite. Yeah, I know. Like, we fucking did it. How fucking beautiful is yeah. that? Yeah. To be like, I fucking hated you. And now I can't. I can't even imagine not having you around. Victory is sweeter when enjoyed together. That's true. No man is an island. Yeah. Yeah, so we live in such a like instant gratification world right now where people are getting divorced like it's a junior high relationship. And a lot of things like people quit. Like that's one big thing that I'm really scared of. I'm like, man, if Taika is put in an activity and he finds it hard, and he wants to quit. Do I have the tenacity like my mom to force him for like five years until he finishes it? You know, like every single day. Because these days, like back in my mom's generation is like the minute you have a kid, your life is over. So it's all to the kid. So if my mom had a rule, she's enforcing that rule until death. For me, I'm enforcing that rule until Game of Thrones comes on. And then I want the path of least resistance because I kind of want to watch Game of Thrones because in our generation, there's half of you we give to the kid and there's still a me part of it, you know. And if there is that, I'm not going to be able to enforce things the way my mom did. Yeah. Um, yeah, your mom is not even human, though. She's like on some next level. Yeah, she'll stand outside of my room like 24 hours yeah, straight staring at the door to make sure I don't come out. Yeah, or something. she's she's very disciplined. But like, um, so you're saying you're not, you, you would rather have people stick it through. Do you think knowing how fucking polar opposites your parents are, completely opposite, you think they would have been better off together? Yeah, work it out. Work that shit out. Oof. So this is the thing. I don't even see that happening so though. The, well, but then the what my preference is, it's, not isolated like that, right? So my preference starts from the beginning where you experiment a lot. You try to learn as much about yourself as possible. Then you go into the engagement period. You're like, oh, I think I can spend the rest of my life with them, but let's do this probationary, really get to know each other for a few years. Not a three-month engagement, maybe a three-year-plus engagement. Really get to know each other. Okay, we've done all this. I know a lot about myself. I know about each other. I know about us. Now I'm going to let those words come out of my mouth where I'm committed to you for the rest of my life. Once you do that, you have to live up to those words, right? Kind of like in the military, when you want to protect the, the U.S. from all um, terrorists, foreign or domestic, that's why treason is such a big thing because you took an oath to defend the country, right? If you... If you go back on such strong words, it's like off with their heads. You got to slice your head off. So I think why even give or tell yourself till death do us part if you're not going to do that? So with my parents, um, I believe they got married later. So I'm assuming they did do a lot of experimentation. One part I know they did fuck up on is a really quick engagement. They were pen pals. They came over, I think within a month or two, boom, they got married. So they didn't really get, they got, they were in the honeymoon phase. My grandpa really liked them. He was very gentlemanly. And it was just like one thing after another. They didn't get a chance to ride out the honeymoon phase. So uh, if if they were to follow, I guess, the Bart Kwan program to love, they already were off. And then they were, they prematurely said, we're going to uh, be together until death. Okay, but. But now, okay, well, before I even say that, um, let's pause a little bit. Are we going to that We're again? going there. Oh, going there. Mm -hmm. And shout outs to Manscaped. This is hands down my favorite, one of my favorite sponsors because it makes my dick look bigger. Ay, I shave ay, my pubes. I don't get bloody. <laughs> There's, they don't guarantee you're going to get a bigger dick, by the way. No, but it's an optical illusion. When you grow massive hedges Bush. like I do, 
it makes your wee wee look smaller because it's covering all kinds of shit. But when I unleash it, it looks way bigger. And then it turns her on. Oh yeah, baby. And she and and uh, when we're you know doing the horizontal tango, it's way way cleaner. There's not all kinds of weird juices going around. Why are they weird, dude? What? There's no weird juices. There, this fr- <laughs> friction and juices. It just makes it just makes a different type of froth. So, so I like uh, Manscaped, and they just came out with the Lawnmower 3.0. I love the So names. the last one, it already was already skin safe technology, but they improved on that somehow. Ooh, and now they have, the, yeah, now they have this new ceramic blade. What did you think I was doing? Oh, uh, shaking the dice. Okay, yeah. So they have this new ceramic blade where it won't rust, um, and it stays even sharper. So that's super cool. If you use code B E A W, get twenty percent off. And free shipping at manscaped.com. That's B E A W. 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Go shave your balls, especially if you have crazy bush or if you want uh, your significant other to go, Wow, did you get bigger? Like, I just got a haircut. <laughs> and we're back. But, like, okay, so that's, yeah, we're back here. Okay. We're, we're away from there. Now we're, we're here. here. Okay. Yeah. So we were away from here and we went there. Yeah. And now we're back. Got it. Um, so yes, that's I guess your perfect scenario. You put them through the you run them through the program, and the success rate should be higher. Yes, right. But right now they missed your program. They didn't get that IG sponsored ad. They didn't see it. They're in a fuck. They're back to where they were. You think they could have worked it out? I think so. Really? Yeah, I really do. I I, I really think if they had more vulnerable times together. Yeah. And if therapy was more available, but therapy wasn't very that available before. I think if two humans really want to work things out, I think they can. That's true. That's true. There's just so much there's so much Well, work things out and then work things out within themselves. Yeah, exactly. Cuz there's so much we have so much willpower that we don't even understand. Mm-hmm. And with that willpower, like placebo, right? Like that's freaking crazy. Nocebo is even crazier. They're both crazy. The, yeah. the fact that something doesn't work, but you think it's so hard, you make it work or not work. That's magic. That's how strong we are. So yeah. our willpower is so freaking insane that if two humans really want to make it work, I think they can make it work. They need to talk more, but they need to uh, understand each other more, understand themselves more. And it might take 20 years. You know, it might take like 10 years of depression. Well, yeah, imagine that. How long does it take some people to really know who they are? A long time. Not until they're like 60, 70, 80. Do do they have a better grasp of who they are? Life. That's why they're like fucking no regrets anymore, man. That's what they tell the younger generation. Don't even fight. That ain't even shit. Yeah. You know, and now you're dealing with you cohabitating and building with another entity that you had no fucking hand in their upbringing. Yeah. And now you guys have to make it work. That's hard. That's a huge ask, man. Yeah. That's what we all, that's, that's, that's why it's tough being parents. When I was at that seminar, there was this couple, um, they were sitting in completely separate, uh, cause they put you into groups. Yeah. So they had different groups. So the lady stands up and she's talking about how her and her husband have been having the shittiest relationship for the past two years. Like they were once super in love and he was great and he supported her and, vice versa um and then these things she so she started her own business he got retired she started getting more attention and he like snaps that so she's painting this marriage from her point of view and it and it sounds really fucked up like if she was telling me i'd be like wow your husband's a dick you know and and for the most part the audience was there going like damn like wow you endured all that damn you're a strong woman you know and then tony comes in and he goes okay cool um what type of, and he will like explain, like, what phase do you think you're in? Are you in the me, me, me? Are you in the, in the, I need my homies and my, you know, my crew? Are you in the, oh, I'm just, I need to monetize off. Of like what phase in life are you in? And it was discovered that she would, and she, before I even answer that, uh, or say what happened next, she was saying, we're determining right now, we're talking about divorce. And after we attend this seminar, we're going to determine, like, this is going to, this is the only last determining factor if we're going to stay together or not. Like, how we feel after this seminar is going to determine if we're going to stay together or not. And um, it was determined that she's in a very me, me, me phase. And, and it was all her perception of him 
she was like, because it's so me, she didn't realize what she was doing and contributing to that marriage or the lack of contribution. And um, towards the end of it, she was the person that was resisting the love the most. And and once that was that all unraveled and it was revealed, um, she was like so apologetic and she realized that she was like, holy fuck, it's been me the one that's been, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a two way street, but she's like, I've been the one that's been creating this world in my own head. And like, she's like, of course I don't want to divorce you. I fucking love you like crazy, you know, but it, it, it awesome. takes like the right questions and that peeling back of layers and being completely vulnerable with yourself and honest and going like, fuck, I'm the cancer right now. Or like, shit, I'm the one not willing to budge. Yeah. Like I'm the one that's building these walls and not, not wanting to be flexible and that's that's fucking hard and, sh and they must have been like in their 50s damn they've yeah. been fighting through it a long time yeah but they just couldn't get past that that hurdle i mean i wonder if they're still together now i mean this happened back in december we're we're in like january late january now yeah yeah but it's it's tough man like i i wish this was this these resources were more readily available and just more um more economical for people to to um to to experience i wish there was a class like i remember in high school they have like uh peer counseling and stuff yeah but i wish there was um like one period where every, it was just one big giant group discussion you know yeah. so like it's like we we learn math science all these things very theoretical like mean girls which one was that mean girls yeah, I mean, like, what, what about oh, what scene? Girls? Oh, uh, when, you know, are you familiar with the movie? I think Somewhat? so. Okay, do you remember that they were writing, so there was the popular girls? Yeah, yeah, they're writing on that, like, what they hate and yeah. all that. Yeah, and then the main girl, they all kind of turn on her. Yeah. And then so she turns in that book. Yeah. And then the girls, the whole girls in all the school realize yeah, that yeah, they were yeah. all talking about each other yeah. and they rumble. Yeah. And then they call all the girls... And they put them in the auditorium. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. then they create that safe space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Something like that. But it's every single day. Oh, okay. So every single day where um, people can talk about something, it's a safe space. And you, everyone, it's a required one out of your six periods. And then so not only can you talk about your issues, but you can hear about other people's issues. And you can kind of That just, helps so much. And you can just kind of just talk through it. I think that would be so important because people are going through so much shit creates a community yeah and people they have so much defense mechanisms that they built this character about themselves to the point where they go wait i don't think this is even me yeah and they build a new them that's not even them that was me and then that person is making decisions for this person and then they're like wait but that's not even me all the decisions i'm making are as this person i need yeah. to go back to here yeah and i've then, been there so i'm trying i'm trying to like figure out like Man, it'd be cool if they have a, a open class to constantly help people break down their defense mechanisms. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, at this seminar, there was even people that were in their 80s. Wow. They were like older people still trying to figure some shit out. That's crazy. It's beautiful to see, but yeah. yeah like it is beautiful that's, to see. That's how like deprived we are yeah, of I that. Yeah, I, I, I could totally see my mom benefiting. Because you know, she's so like... uh like completely devoted, blindly devoted to religion that I always tell you about it. Like in, in the texts, it, it she seems like the get out person, you know, well, like she, she is just spouting out all these Buddhist philosophies, but I can clearly tell behind those eyes, like she wants to reach a human connection with me. Yeah. I mean, I think there's something very beautiful with belief and I feel like everyone should have belief, a belief system, um, because there are things in this universe that are just, that are unexplained. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's like a lot of things like like atoms fucking disappearing and like where do they go? And then they but come her, back. But her and then, beliefs are anti human. That's the problem. Right. No, I get that. No, yeah. I get that. So there's it's okay to have the beliefs. Yeah. And to do that, but but being dependent on it and not like it's okay to question. It's okay to like Yeah. Yeah, that's not happening. Because what I like about Christianity is a lot of the beliefs are very human, you know? Love your neighbor love thy neighbor. It's cool. Love is a very human thing. The way my mom uh, receives and learns Buddhism is like, what is love? Love is just in this cycle of reincarnation is your obligation to be a mom. So like, so it's almost very like robotic. So it's kind of like, 
well, yeah, you don't really have to love me. Just be a good mom and fulfill your responsibility. I'll fulfill my responsibility as a son. But it should be, ooh, where's Taika? I miss him so much. And I'm like, oh, what's miss? You shouldn't even be missing a material thing, you know? And it's like. You suck. <laughs> I know. I always turn it back on Instead her. of just being like, yes. Instead of like nurturing that and pulling that out of her, you're like judging her. Well, now I am. Now she goes, I miss Taika. I send her a ton of pictures. And I'm just like, I'm just going to ignore all that fucking philosophical bullshit you try to throw at me. I'm going to yeah. try to connect with you as a human being. Yeah. But I could see the get out person where she's like. You shouldn't never miss anything. We're just all matter in the universe. And then, oh, but I miss Taika so much. Yeah, and oh. I miss you. And I miss all of us. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's hard. It's fucking hard to human, man. It's hard. And I don't blame anyone for getting a divorce. Sometimes even getting a divorce is what is needed to give them that kick in the ass or that extra push to be like, yo, look at what you're doing. Sometimes you, know? you need five divorces. Sometimes you need five, you know, like we're... We're all just trying to do our best. Elon Musk has five divorces. But I mean, but look at what he's doing <laughs> to humanity, you know? Yeah. Like, we're, we're all geniuses and dumbasses all at the exact same time. And I, and I, and I genuine, genuinely believe if um, you operate with love and you're trying your best and your intentions are good, then you'll make the right decisions. But it's fucking, it's fucking hard. Yeah. It's fucking hard. So... Yeah, this podcast. What you guys get out of this podcast? Get divorced? Not get a divorced? <laughs> I think they got. A I said bunch divorced. Of circle talk. Just, it is a just bunch of circle thoughts and just. It's not one of those where we have. It's not like a definitive. Definitive things, definitive answers, or even a definitive train of thought. Just some food for thought. Just a lot of exploration to see, like maybe there's bits and pieces people are able to benefit from. Or they're like, you guys are fucking wrong, and you guys don't know what the fuck you're talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely, you're is, right. Yeah. You're not wrong. But I definitely know that I'm not wrong when I say you need to figure out who you are, what state you're in in life. I wish someone told me that sooner. Fuck yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. But but then I feel like would we have re, would we have received it the same way? Because yeah. we didn't want it back then. I didn't want it back then. I'd be like, get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> no, I've been trying to figure out who I am. My mom didn't want me to figure out who I am. Oh, like travel and do all that type of shit? Just anything. Oh. Like anything just learn more about myself yeah like uh like sometimes you need to get your ass beat to find out you're a little bitch right and yeah. like, oh maybe combat sports isn't for me because i'm kind of wimpy yeah but if if you're constantly straight away from that and you just don't know and then or like oh yeah i, I wasn't allowed to eat pizza until i was 25 and well do you like pizza now and you're like mm, no and it's like damn it took you 25 years to figure that out so i wish i knew way more about myself yeah i think the less you know about yourself, the more insecure you are. Because, mm -hmm. you know, like now when you when you actually know things about yourself, like, oh, yeah, I don't like cilantro. And people go, you don't like cilantro? I'm like, no, I'm not insecure about it. But when you're on the questioning end, I think that's where a lot of insecurities because you're like, wait, am I like this? Am I not like this? I don't really know. Am I that guy? Like, am I am I the am I the the buff fitness guru guy or am I not the buff fitness guru guy? Like, you know, there's just like. When so which one is it? <laughs> like when you're just dancing around. That's where I think a lot of insecurities happen. But yeah. when when you know what you are, like, oh, yeah, this is me. I'm Chinese American. I, you know, I think like I wished when I was younger, I was able to be pushed to figure out myself way more. Because when you hear someone that knows who they are, it's 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 beautiful hearing people like that speak. Yeah. Even when they're young. It's compelling. Yeah, like, I love skateboarding. You know, yeah. like you like the, a lot of the child prodigies. They're like, oh, yeah, I started skating when I was six, six. I fucking love skateboarding. I've been skateboarding for like seven years. I'm 13 now and I'm a pro. I love skateboarding. And they're like, damn, you got to figure that out that young. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, I guess I don't think about it like that where I say I wish, I wish, I wish. Mm -hmm. And I know you don't, you're not um, harping on that. And I know you're not stuck on that idea. But um, I'm just going to do that for Taika. Yeah. Yeah. For, for him, like. There was you, a girl at the thing at the seminar. She was 15. And wow. she was fucking kicking ass. Wow. She knew herself so well. So I think like her mom did such a, or, or her environment was so good for her that she was so confident. Like she, she just stood up and there was just like this, this aura to her. And I know I sound kooky, but there was just like this, this aura to how she was standing, to how she made eye contact, how she giggled that you're just like, wow, she's a very uh, secure person. That's awesome. Yeah, it was beautiful. It yeah. was really beautiful to witness. And she was at the seminar. So not not only was she was she in a very safe environment that people are like, hey, what you're doing is great. She got validation and um, positive reinforcement for that. Yeah. Yeah, so 
definitely Taika is going to receive this shit. Yeah. I'm going to send Taika as soon as he can like think a little bit more logically. Send him where? To the seminar. When he's like five? Hopefully Tony Robbins is still alive. But <laughs> no, when he can like, when he's like in the teens. Oh, uh, okay. Even like someone like Isaac's age, I think would benefit. Nah, he's probably still too small. But like when he's in his teens, I think it'd be really beneficial. Damn, that's cool. 15 at a self-help seminar. Yeah, she was. She knew what she wanted. Some she people, did. Some people, knew, like, you know, my friend Derek back in the day, like. Oh, his sister. Yeah, his sister was in junior high and she knew of the high school she wanted to get into to go to Stanford. Yeah. So she researched it and they went to a private school. Like some kids, I don't know if it's They're the parenting stellar. or whatever, but they they help the kid understand what they want. And they're so secure of themselves. They go, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to work in the Pentagon later. Like they just know what they're going to do. It's crazy. Yeah, and it's a lot of nurturing too. Yeah. Maybe her parents were really listening because maybe other parents would be like, okay, okay, yeah, when you get older, we'll do that. Sure, yeah. we'll do that. Sure. Okay, well, we can't do that right now. Well, we'll, we'll, but they're not really listening. Yeah, they're just prolonging it versus they're like the Michael Phelps parents. Oh, you want to swim? I'll take you tomorrow. Let's swim. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, this was an interesting conversation. This one was hard for me. My brain hurts a little bit because I'm just like, fuck. There were just so many layers to it that yeah. uh, not that I was afraid to say the wrong thing, but it it's, that's not the right thing. There's just a lot to consider. Yeah, I just wanted exactly. I just wanted to make sure that I was doing it justice before I was like opening my mouth. And we're only talking about like 0.01% of oh all marriages. There's yes. like so many. There's the abuse factor. There's, oh my God. there's like PTSD. Uh, multiracial. Yeah, there's multi-generational. Yeah, yeah. Two cultures coming together. There's just so many other things that religious oh my so many gosh other factors. Yeah. there is yeah. there is and this is like the tip the tiny tip of the ice the huge iceberg the yeah. titanic iceberg or like if the there's the, a joke no there isn't there was a joke coming no, i'm serious what was he gonna say i was gonna say like if there's two partners and they're on opposite sports teams See, like, how you. do you make that work that's a big ding that's a big thing it's a big ding yeah that's a big ding damn it's a big hey ding. you said sick okay when I mean, you wanted to say six and i didn't say anything when did i say sick you're like when are we gonna take him when he's sick and you're like six, six. Yeah, well, I didn't harp on it, all right? Well, hurry up. Finish your thing. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening, and thank you to our sponsors. Again, that is Ship Station. Y'all make ship happen. Um, for everyone listening, you guys are going to get 60 days free when you use code BEAR. So just make sure to go to shipstation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in BEAR, B-E-A-W. And we also have Best Fiends. It's a free download. If you want to have a fun game, colorful game with good story, go check that out. And also Manscaped for all of the men below the belt needs. They have ball toner, ball deodorant, fragrance, fragrance. lawnmower 3.0, even Undies. boxers. And then last but not least, me and my bear's own company, Barbell Brigade. We're a gym. We're an apparel company. We also now make supplements. Everything we make is performance driven to help you achieve your goals. Make sure you go barbellbrigade.com and check out our pre-workout, the one that we just came out with. And in my personal opinion, it's formulated for strength, endurance, and it's the best one out there. I really think it's the Ferrari of pre-workouts. There's 500 milligrams of vitamin C for your adrenal glands. There's three different species of mushrooms in there. There's theanine, tyrosine for mental focus. It's it's the best. Everyone that has ever tried it is the best. And I'm not just harping on it because I helped invent it. I really think it's the best. Go check it out, barbellbrigade.com, and it tastes delicious. Hey.